Welcome everybody to the Valley Vault podcast. Um, this is our episode two with our first guest. That we have a special guest today, John Tolson, and we, we had to do a little. Yeah, we had to do a little bit of a little bit of a redo here, but thank you, thank yeah. you, John. So a little uh, audio issue, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us today, John. Everybody, so anyone that's listening, anyone that's watching, please subscribe, like, and please comment if you ever have any questions. We can answer some of them in the future. But I really appreciate everybody watching and listening. But uh, we, we have a great guest today. He's, he's somebody that's really made a big impact in the community in Simi Valley. And uh, we're very honored to have him here. And the Valley Vault podcast, we, we want to have people here that you know, show honor, bravery, and courage in the community and, and are always supporting everybody. And he's been a great support for us and couldn't think of anyone better to have on our podcast as our first guest than John Tolson, really. I'm honored. And <clears throat> thank you. And He's a good leader. Absolutely. Oh, oh, wow. Absolutely great leader. And so, yeah, we're going to be going over some things. His, his background, he works for the Chamber of Commerce, and he has a business background. He's also the chairman of the Planning Commission for the City of Simi Valley. So anyone that's listening or watching, if you're in real estate lending or real estate development, you're going to want to listen in. We're going to be asking him some questions about that towards the end. So it's going to be impact your business and your career, potentially what happens in this community, because there's going to be some big things going on in this, in, in this city. And so you're going to want to wait till the end. We're going to be talking about that, but we're going to get to know John and ask him about what he did before, what he does currently and what he's, you know, what's going to be happening in the future for him. And share, so, like, share, like, and subscribe. Yeah, it, yes. absolutely. And also, yeah, make sure you, you share too and subscribe. <laughs> and, I have my co-host here, Mr. Frank Tomlinson. Everybody knows Frank. Good to see you all. Hey, again. everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John. And um, I want to introduce our guest, John Tolson. So, yeah, I just want to get everything started. John, John, he's he's been great to us. So, yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. I appreciate you. I know we're going to we're kind of going through some questions over again. But, yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your background. I know we were talking about before we started this, we were talking, we asked you some questions about your background, what you did in business and you kind of get into that, and, this, and then we'll go from there. No problem. Let's, yeah. get, let's go for it. <clears throat> Born in Fresno, moved to Tucson, Arizona. When my dad got transferred there. And then when I was 16, he got transferred to Woodland Hills. And so I uh, came to Simi Valley. And uh, I, you know, my three sisters and I said, Dad, all I care about is uh, uh, need a two-story house. In Arizona, we have a flat roof with ro rocks on the roof. Oh, yeah. And so we wanted a two-story house. He came through and bought a house in Simi Valley. Graduate from Royal, and um, you know, my I have three kids. They they all graduate from Royal. Yeah. When, they, when my oldest was there, a couple of the teachers were still the ones that I had, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's time for them to move on. <laughs> anyway, my claim to fame, a lot of people don't know, but they know about as I owned a retail store in Ch in Chatsworth for 18 years, and it is a kind of a unique kind of store, not the typical retail store. It was a costumes, balloons, and magic store. It was called Magic World. And right on Topanga between Devonshire and Lassen. Anybody who grew up in the Valley, for the most part, used to know about our store. Mm -hmm. And because of the nature of the industry, of the th things we sold, we would do a lot of costumes. Halloween was a huge time for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would do costumes for TV shows and full-length movies and commercials and that kind of thing. We would do costumes for the tonight show johnny carson would come up he lived in malibu drive up to panga he'd stop by our store pick up some magic because he's a budding magician and loved to do magic yeah. then he'd go across to burbank but uh, any of the opening scenes with jay leno we would do the judge ito costumes during the oj simpson case they the, the opening set they would always do different costumes and they'd get costumes from us and you know Michael Jackson came in and Muhammad Ali, so it was a it, it was, was a, a spot place. to go for everyone knew you that bet. this was a spot to go. This you was bet. like way before like all the Amazons. Wait, and wait, all wait. That. here's the deal: so there's there's business owners here in town who came and would buy stink bombs from me. Oh, oh, wow! But we won't name yeah. those names of those who they are. Well, wow. I, can tell I remember us that buying those. Yeah. Was <laughs> it? Tell us those later. Exactly. I remember yeah. buying those when I was in junior high, and I remember kids buying them. And I'm not going to say I did, but I did see people throw stink bombs in the in the hallways in junior high. And oh man, it was it was bad. Yeah, <laughs> it was right. bad. Yeah. Excuse me, it so, was fun. Yeah, it, but it was fun. You're, you're right bad. about a claim to fame because I remember it. I remember that you used to have. I think that there was a gorilla and a and a pantsless lone ranger. Lone ranger <laughs> was out in front, right? We, you know, 
because of the nature of this, how busy the street was, we would try and get them to notice us. And so we would put balloons up on the above the store. We'd have guys in costumes and the gorilla suit. So going down to Panga, we'd have them across the street. Mm-hmm. And then at nighttime when they were coming home, uh, we would have them on our side of the street because it was on the east side of the street. Okay. Yeah. And you were saying there was a story. Oh, yeah. yeah. Earlier. Here we go. Yeah. So at one point, we, you know, we'd have a gorilla on the costume. But one time we had uh, the Lone Ranger, you know, yeah. full-on gray outfit, tassels, the hat, guns, and he would spin the guns and point, you know, and then put them back in his holster. I get a call from uh, LAPD Devon, Devonshire Division saying, hey, John, um, we got to call someone. That there's a man on the street pointing guns at the cars. I said, come on, it's the Lone Ranger. So I had to call him and tell him. It's not just any man, it's the Lone Ranger. (laughs) Exactly. Come on. Well, yeah, so it was good. Yeah, that's funny. All good stories. So when you were saying that you you moved around a little bit, so your dad got transferred from Tucson to Woodland Hills. My dad was in the insurance mm -hmm. industry. He was a claims manager, and so his company would transfer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then I know I know Frank was mentioning it before about your well your dad was in the Air Force. He he served in the in, in the US Air Force. And I know Frank was mentioning about before how it was that we're the the Rotary was it was the Rotary or the Chamber is doing Rotary the Rotary Rotary, yeah. Rotary Club of Senior Sunrise. Yeah, yeah. We did a little Veterans Day honoring all of the veterans. Yeah. Some of the some of our club members who are veterans, family members who are veterans, and then we had some of members from this community come out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, growing up, my dad would tell me about being in the Air Force, but we didn't make a big deal about it. And so to be able to honor him that day was a, is a, a great thing. He he was, uh, my two older sisters were born in Riverside when he was stationed at, I think it was March Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. And he had spent two years in England. And one of the two years, he was the Airman of the Year. So uh, I have Mad respect for my father. He just, uh, I, you know, he's passed, but uh, great guy. And the fact that he served our country, I, you know, very impressed. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. And you can see, I mean, I saw the connection even that day in the admiration that you had for your dad. And so I'm moved by that. But that's something that I see from you even when we talk about all veterans and all service people that you, you hold them in high regard. And so we appreciate that, but we know that the service people appreciate we, that too. We have what we have is very special, very unique, especially living in Simi Valley is just amazing, but we have our freedoms because of the people who've in the past fought for our freedoms and the currently who do just, yeah, I got mad yeah. respect for that. Well, let me let me ask you. So, did your dad did he serve any other type of committees outside of work or you know military? Because it's something that people that I don't know you. If if you just look up John, you know John serves different. He's with the chamber, with the Rotary. I know I I, I don't know if I've already said this, but John he's probably one of the best known people in Simi Valley. I mean, I I knew who John Tolson was years ago before I even met him. Wow. And then when I met him, I was like, oh. He, John, I mean, I've seen you, but a lot of people know you. It's like you're very, very involved in the community, and it's, it's not. I've never heard anyone say anything bad about you. It's always something good, and I always see you serving. I'm like, this guy's a machine. He's always at all the events. All he's always serving. So, did your dad serve? Did he do any like any? I guess groups like that. Then that maybe that did that something like that maybe he, inspire you. You know, he he did he did he did a lot of service and community mm-hmm. service, and mm-hmm. and kind of got involved. He was like the leader of the insurance industry, whatever, you know. Like organiz- their board, like one of their organizations. Of yeah, boards, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I guess I saw that that way. Yeah. And instilled in me, uh, I grew up uh, a Boy Scout, which is, you know, obviously okay. do a lot of service. Yeah. And, you know, kind of a military kind of vibe with the, with the Boy Scouts. And so, yeah. um, you know, it just, it, it's in my blood, I guess. And I, I guess, again, I, I just, I love where I live. I think it's a very unique uh, city, and mm-hmm. I want to make it better. So, uh, what I, whatever I can do to do, I, I try to do. Yeah, that's great. I, well, I think all of us have been. I've I've been here since I was a kid. John Frank's been here for a long time too. So, yeah, we agree. It's, Watch it with the wise cracks, Alex. Yeah, he's he's been here for a few years. Yeah, but 
it's uh, we have long running jokes but with frank but it's just teasing him but yeah we you know i you know i have wife kids here we you know i i've lived here since i was six years old i'm 42 and i've thought about moving out and out of the city but then my wife's you know she's not from here she's like i love this city. It's, a, it's a great city for our kids for us yeah, and and yeah, it's great that you say you want you want the you want the city to get better. I I would say, peop, some people. I mean, I, you could see like on social media and certain forums, they kind of say some negative things, and it doesn't make any to me. It doesn't make any sense when they say negative things about the, the community that they live in. It's like, well, you should. I know it's. I get it. People they they, in their mind, they're thinking saying something negative is going to motivate people to improve something, but. I think that's the opposite. It's, you know, say something positive. So this way it'll, you know, positivity will go out and then it'll improve, you know, I guess certain businesses or the community, but this is a great community. The other part of it too is get involved and make it better. Yeah. Get involved. It's one thing to say, you know, I'm going to, we should do this or you should do this. How about just do it? Yeah. Do it just like, well, yeah. Cause I, like I was saying, you're, you're, you're serving these organizations and it's just, yeah, you're everywhere. So when we talk about the planning commission, was that something that you decided to start serving in or did you get pulled into it by somebody else? A little bit of both. So I use, I use my knowledge of my business to help in my job now. So mm-hmm. when I had 18 years of, of running a retail store and trying to make payroll and trying to promote myself and motor, you know, those kind of things, yeah. I use that on a daily basis when I'm helping somebody who's either trying to relocate or start a business here and see me. And so that's what I do with my with this chamber of commerce, and then in my involvement with the community itself, there was an, a, at one point about six years ago, one of the uh, city council members was the position was opened up for um, a, an appointment, mm-hmm. and so Elaine Litster was appointed, and I uh, went up to her that very same day and said, "Hey, you know, you know, each city council member appoints a planning commissioner." And I said to her, if you wanted to consider me as a potential planning commissioner, I'd love to do it. So I've been doing that for about five years or so. And five years, wow. the last two years have been the chair of the planning commission. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So his, his kind of the marriage of chamber and planning commissioner, it, do those things cross over as much as you thought they would? You know, there's a lot of, there's, a, there's yeah, it's, it's all involvement with the city, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, they're definitely different. They're separate and s- distinct. And mm-hmm. if there's any kind of potential conflict, I gotta s- step away or from voting on something that yeah. might, you know, be conflicting. But th- at this point, there's not been, so it's good. Okay. And y- I know you were talking about the planning commission. So you've been, you've been. It's been five years. Is it how how many years are you a planning commissioner, or is what is it? I'm a, I'm a planning commissioner as long as uh, Elaine Lister is a city council member. Okay, got it. Okay, I don't know much about that. But okay, so, so as long as so she okay either retires or gets voted out, then somebody else will get a, a okay. point. Okay, so with the planning commission, this is so what what's your what are your duties as a plan or the chairman of the planning commission? So any 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 projects that come to town, whether it's residential, commercial. Those kind of things, mm-hmm. zoning, those kind of things all come to before the planning commission if it's warranted. Okay. And so housing, building, you know, all those kind of things come before us. We approve them, you know, look at over the plans and the landscaping and all those things and okay. every aspect of it we, we go over. There's city staff that does some of the you know, most of the heavy lifting and then we just kind of look it over, make sure that it's exactly what we want to do and the direction we want to go and then approve or disapprove. Okay. What are, are there any big projects or any projects that you're allowed to talk about that are happening commercial, residential in, in the city of Simi Valley? So, you know, there's the, the, the there's attractive homes, and we won't call, won't call them attract, a housing development up uh, Los Canyons. Los Canyons. One of the yeah. golf courses is going to be turned over into some housing. Okay. And it's going to be a little bit nicer homes. That's why I don't say it's attract homes, but they're nicer, bigger lots. No two houses will like face each other. There'll be at angles and things and that kind of thing. Okay. So that's that's in the works. Has been approved by us, and then you know, in the next year or so, hopefully they'll start breaking ground. There's some talk about a, a housing complex right behind the the mall. So if you go up Erringer, yeah. uh, behind the fire station. Okay. There, there's yeah. some home. There's some ground there that's been talked about potentially as a attractive homes there. 
Okay. Maybe more tracked versus. The, yeah, just like mo- most of the houses, yeah. Yeah. So on the development up in Lost Canyon, do you know how many homes are expected to build? You know, I think there's, there's, it's in three phases, and I think the first phase might be around 100 and so. Okay. Right. Oh, so it's, so it's three phases. So it's going to be could be a couple hundred or. Could be potentially more. Wow. So that's that's a massive development. That's like a, I don't know how big Big Sky is, but how many homes are in Big Sky, but it's almost. More. It's going to be doubling what Big Sky is pretty much. You know, the land's there, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's good. It's good how, for us. How do you think that'll that'll impact the the city, the the city and the community? So so, you know, the other the other one of the other projects that's over on Easy Street is some industrial projects. Okay. Some buildings that are being built there just west or east of Madeira. Okay. So, on Easy Street, just west east of Madeira, all these industrial complexes or the buildings, mm-hmm. we're about one percent vacancy rate, and so to to build these up is going to bring more. Mm. commerce to Simi Valley, actually make it so that there's more individuals who can stay here and work here. And, and as opposed to like the retail, these are more going to be higher paying jobs. And so we get calls on a weekly basis from the Valley, people who have businesses in the Valley and business in the local area who want to relocate here because of how safe it is, how nice it is. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. if one thing to have the, the business here, well, the owners or the CEOs, the higher you know level owners, need to have places to live too. Right. And so those are the potentially the Interesting. areas okay. that they'll move to would be the Big Sky area. So yeah, so they're yeah. building that on Easy Street to bring businesses in, bring more jobs, small businesses, and then you have that higher end homes. I did hear this. I did hear this a while ago. It was a long time ago. I heard this was like the. What they're trying to do, but I didn't. I didn't realize they had the development. The two, the two add together. They you go know, together. When right. I first was here, this was called a, a bedroom community, which yeah. means yep. everyone lived here and everyone left the city. To they go spend work. their money somewhere well, now else. It's, yeah. So now it's the idea is that let's let's stay here, work here, and live here. Yeah, and that's kind of the vision of the planning commission is to to make it more that. You bet. Yeah. So do you think? I I think that that's great because that's gonna yeah, it's gonna bring more jobs. It's gonna bring keep more of the tax dollars here in the city, which we need it. It's a great city, but it's going to, it's going to help everything. What kind of, have you heard any type of negative remarks of people saying if it's going to be too much? Cause you know, you've, you've, you've heard, you've heard this. I, I know everyone's heard this is they say, and no offense against anyone that lives in the San Fernando Valley. I used to live there. That's fine. The city's fine. But they say, Oh, we don't want this to be another San Fernando Valley, which if you don't know the San Fernando Valley, it's just, it's open. There's almost a million people in San Fernando Valley. It's big. Simi Valley is you. There's there's no other cities really surrounding it. You have to get into Moore Park. It's it's not as easy like if like you're in the valley, you're driving through because of the hills. You end up with because of the yeah. hills, it becomes like a fence. Right? Yeah, the hills. Very like much, yeah, it's yes. kind of blocks us from everything. So it's much different. But have you heard any type of negative like remarks like that or anything similar to that? You betcha. We had yeah. a we had a project at the corner of uh, Tapo and Alamo. Where uh, I know that one. Yeah, some apartment complexes there where. You know, they're being built right now, and a lot of people think they were too tall, mm-hmm. too condensed, too close to the street. And as a matter of fact, we denied that project as on the planning commission. The okay. state, because of the state rules, uh, came back and said, uh, if you don't approve this project, uh, we are going to take over your planning department and make decisions on all properties. And oh, so wow. uh, we had two or three sessions where the residents in the area came and said, we don't want this. We would said to the uh, developer, say, hey, you know, let's continue this and maybe make some tweaks to the plans, to the ideas. And he said, no, just go ahead and deny it. So he knew that uh, the state would come in and say this. And so we had another meeting and we had to approve it. And it so kind of kind of got strong armed then. Yeah. Bit. Wow. Time. You're hanging off for it. See, that's I see. I didn't know that. I've heard. I heard the. My parents don't live too far from there, which it, it, that development doesn't bother me. But a lot of people have had. You know, they didn't like it. All the negative remarks about it, and I get it. But I didn't know. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know that full story where the state came in and said, "No, if you don't do it, we're, we're no, we'll if you don't do it, we'll take everything over. Everything. Everything. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So. The people in the planning commission. So anyone listening, watching, if you know that development, the people in the planning commission, they denied it. Correct. Yes, the state came in. 
it's the state they, that, that we t- were forced to. Yeah, they're forced to. So, yeah, something else that I that I saw just doing work in the new neighborhood over on the corner of Galena and Cochrane. Also, uh, some of those units are three story and they do have kind of multi use type of type of feel to them. Oh yeah. One of the residents, and this was pretty cool interaction. I'm wondering from you if the planning commission thinks these things out and even afterwards is able to hear from residents and what they think about the places that are built out and how they serve them. But one of the residents came out and when she was talking, she had moved here from LA, probably like a lot of folks had moved out of urban areas in the COVID times. She had moved out here, wasn't interested in having a big yard, which was kind of a staple to, you know, the, you know, seventies and eighties. I mean, huge yards, my parents, they had a huge yard, but they come here from an urban area. So they're not interested in caring for a huge yard. And she said, you know, when I lived out in LA, I would never go out for a walk in the evening. And then she stopped herself and she Mm. said, actually, I would never go out for a walk, but here I actually feel perfectly safe going out, not only in the day, but in the evening, I'll walk my dog. I'll enjoy my time. I'm close to Trader Joe's. I'll walk there and just get my groceries even in the evening time. Is that something that you guys plan for? And have you heard back from residents that you feel like mission accomplished? You know, that was prior to, prior to being built. It was the farmer's building, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it, it had a, I think it was a three or four story building then. And it was uh, office space. And it sat empty for... 10, 12 years plus. And so, you know, we, we already had the idea that there, you know, there's a three or four story building there. And what can we use that property? What would be best use for that property? To be best use for that property would be all retail of some kind. Well, at the time that the project came to us, all those areas ac- across the street and adjacent were like half rented. Yeah. So to put more retail there just didn't didn't make sense. The Sycamore right? Plaza, correct? Yeah. And so uh, they came the they came before the planning commission with some ideas. They went to the city neighborhood councils. The neighborhood councils said we did, this is what we like, we don't like, and so they made some adjustments. But at the same time, right on the on the Cochrane Street, there's retail, so that helps the retail business. Behind it is the is the housing, yeah. and like you said, there somebody who's a developer is trying to get as many houses on the piece of property as possible, and that's why you go higher. But it wasn't; it's not higher than the farmers' building, right? And, and then the, the buildings right across, right uh, right on the street, is is what's called the work live units, and there's about eight or twelve of those where. The bottom floor is a is a retail or an office, mm-hmm. and then you live above it. And so the concept would be like an insurance agent could have his office on the bottom floor and live above it. And so that's what's there now, in a couple of retail retail places adjacent to that McDonald's. Okay. Yeah. Well, hey, I can speak to it, there were glowing reviews, and I the house I walked through it was nice. It was really nice. And we yeah. made sure that there was a access in the in the side on the on the west end side. That you could walk through a fence or a, br- a gate over to Trader Joe's. That's right. Yeah, 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 I've seen that. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's good that they put something there. I, I did notice a lot of developers are are building the building up. It makes sense. I, I there's a lot of people I talk to because you know we do home loans and we so we talk to a lot of people trying to buy a house and it's uh, people don't really care so much about yards anymore. I noticed that, and so a lot of houses, even in the Valencia area, Santa Clarita, they're building houses. They're building up. So and, two, and the other part two too stories. is. You know, also now we have all those residents there mm-hmm. who are going to be shopping across the street. Across the street, the yeah. Store. So where before there was some, you know, less than opportunity if you were a business owner there, now all of a sudden you have more residents who can support, Absolutely. support those businesses. Yeah, I think that's because that place, yeah, you said like 10 plus years, that was empty. So that really impacted. There was, I don't know, how thousand plus employees at that place that would shop because I worked, I used to work at the Wells Fargo as a bank teller way back at right across the street. And it was always busy, you know, with employees from farmers. The other part too is there's three, three segments of, of buildings, residential, commercial, and then there's retail. Mm -hmm. So that commercial is of the three is the least most vacancy. So the hardest to fill. And so residential is pretty straightforward. 
yeah. retail. Yeah, you know that's you know I think we have quite a bit of retail. So that office space to to trade and say, well, let's do ten years of an empty office building. Let's replace it with more office buildings. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That that's good. They that they're part of the planning commission. <laughs> yeah, good planning. Yeah, you know what? No, really, because it's it's. I think that's a big thing people are worried about in the community is like, what is the city going to turn into? I've never really had that concern because growth is good. Growth is good. This is we can't just be stagnant. It's it's good that the city's growing. They're developing more than in fact. In fact, in those houses and that industrial development to to help balance it out to bring other businesses here. So it brings more opportunity and. Especially with with those types of homes, if they're gonna if they're gonna be more like executive level type homes, so you're looking at they're gonna be a million plus dollar homes. Which yes, that is a lot, but that's those are the homes that those are incomes are going up, and also with those businesses coming in, that's you know that's gonna be that's gonna help. I guess the way the community grows, it's gonna grow in the direction that I guess a lot of people have been that have been here for a long time. It's gonna go in the direction that they probably prefer. So again, there's there's some nicer homes in the very west San Fernando Valley, Bell Canyon, Calabasas oh, absolutely, area. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, if I have a if I own a business here in Simi Valley, do I want to make that commute? Even even though that's not very far, yeah. what if I lived even closer? And that would be the the homes that are coming up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think you know I. We asked you a lot of questions. Is there is there anything that maybe we missed? That is there something that maybe people don't know about you, John? That you want to talk about? I know it was your store because I didn't even know that. I mean, that's that, that's great. But is there anything else that maybe we missed that that you feel like other people should know about you? No, I, I you know I I'm involved with the different organizations, whether yeah. it's the Rotary Club, the Simi Sunrise, or uh, Interfaith Community. So just you know, just get involved. Yeah. There's there's lots of opportunities to serve and pick pick something that you like and and help help make our city better. So you yes. do that well. You do that very well and we we definitely appreciate that. But I'm going to reserve the right mm-hmm. to have John back at a future time. If anything changes, anything new comes to mind yeah. that you have that might be coming up that maybe you would come back and and fill us in on. I I'm honored to be the first one, I'll, I'll come back anytime. Appreciate you, John. Thank, thank you, you so much. And yeah, thank you for everyone listening and watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out John. If you're in the community, check out John Tolson. If you're not part, if you own a business, you're not part of the Chamber of Commerce, go be, become a member of the Chamber of Commerce and well worth it, yeah. the Rotary and any organizations John's a part of. And you'll see why he was our first guest and very honored to have you. Thank you so much, thank John. Thank you, John. Thank Appreciate you. you. All right, thank you. All right, guys. See ya.